Okay. Um, I'm I'm curious if uh, if that that improved at all. Much better. It still sounds bad on my end. Um, so I, I, we we went from like thirty people to six people uh, who are tuning in. So um, so we'll see if anybody. Uh, I don't even remember what point I was making. I apologize to everybody who's who's still here. Um, that uh, that we had that unfortunate uh, interruption. I, I really. You know, I never figured out what was wrong um, at all. So the only the only thing I can really see is um, YouTube is is getting a a bad connection from me. I'm I'm hardwired into into my uh, my modem. So okay, uh, just let me know if if it starts sounding really bad again. Uh, let me know. I, I really I'm at a loss. So. Where, where I was, uh, was the adding the fiscal calendar. So let me pop open a, a, a pre-built data module just to, so I can show you how this works fresh. So uh, create data, mo oh, that was the wrong button. Um, let's go back. So this great outdoors data module, this one also comes with the samples. So if you're so inclined, uh, so you'll see I go add new sources. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually in the team content in the I moved this. So this comes with the Cognos samples. You'll find fiscal fiscal calendar and Gregorian calendar. Now you can make these on your own, right? You can make custom calendars if you have a fiscal year that runs a weird period or something like that. But the out of the box ones work pretty good. So I say OK. And at that point, it, it adds the fiscal calendar in as a linked table, which is something I really wanted to to get into, uh, but I, I didn't get a chance to. And given our interruption, I, I suspect I, I won't. I'll, you know, the, the thing is, I can just go live with these live streams at like any time because I I don't know these things uh, like the back of my hand. So so the fiscal calendar you'll see is right there. And then once the fiscal calendar is added in, that's when you can go through and say, okay, let's look at the sales date. And then you're going to want to look at the properties. So click properties, which will open over here. And then it's the lookup reference is what you're, you're looking for. So lookup reference, and then you choose the fiscal calendar. You'll notice there are other things you can use as lookup references. So I haven't totally wrapped my head around I know that this feature is more useful beyond just time. Like you could make dates that are referencing something other than a calendar. My my colleague Rory, if I recall correctly, has messed around with a little messed around with this a little bit to use lookup reference not to reference time but to reference something else. For example, you you could you could like reference. Um, well, maybe we'll give it a shot in a second. Fiscal calendar you choose. Now then you're done. If you look under date, you'll see there's all the relative time stuff. Um, all the relative time stuff right there. Then the same thing with a measure. Once you've done that and you have a date that has relative time, then you go up to a measure and you do the same thing. Look up reference, you measure that reference that sales date and it gives you the relative measures. So, so that's how you do it. And uh, like I like I said earlier, right? Man, I love this feature. It's the best. Um, unfortunately, I, I lost the chat with the other the other uh, questions. So if, if there were questions I didn't get to, I apologize. I, I see that there are still a few people in the chat. Um, so I've been going for an hour and a half. I'll, I'll I'll pause here. There there were what I really wanted to show that I'm. Unfortunately, I didn't get to. I, I was really about to jump into it, but uh, but I didn't get a chance to. Is the um, the model reference functionality? So I think what I'm going to do 
given the unfortunate interruption that we had is uh, probably, I think that just killed off transformer cubes here. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it really it really does a lot for uh, to replace transformer cubes, which is hard for me to say because I, I love transformer cubes. I mean, I love transformer cubes. They're my favorite thing. Transformer and power play, are, to my mind, are the best thing that either Cognos or now IBM ever built. I just, they were phenomenal. Sometimes I, I tell this joke, well, when I'm, I'm giving a, a, a presentations where I'll, I'll say, I'll make a joke about, you know, you know what Tableau was called in, in 2002? Transformer. Waka, waka, waka. It's BI guy jokes. It's like 18 people in the world who think they're funny. But um, it really does replace a lot of the need for transformer cubes. So, um, so in any case, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, thank you uh, to to everyone uh, who tuned in. I will if there are like other. I'll take a couple more questions if anybody in the chat has questions. But um, rather than roll into the other things that I was hoping to show, I'll call it here, and maybe we'll do uh, a follow up live stream next week where I can get. Um, I can get further into the functionality I didn't show. And and the main thing I wanted to show that I didn't get to was really this, is this idea. And this is something that most of my users are struggling with is how do I structure this uh, in a way that's different to help support self-service? And then how do I use the inheritance features of data modules in order to, to have like an IT controlled master module that, um, uh, the, uh, an IT controlled master module and, and then self-service modules that inherit tables from those master modules where your users can't change the tables that they inherit. All they can do is consume them. So that IT still has a lot of control, but that your end users can go and do whatever they want. So that will be the primary topic of, of the next live stream that we do related to data modules. I do see Caesar asks, uh, when you compare timestamps, in different time zones, do I need to put them on the same time zone um, before creating relations? Um, that's a good question. So, so you, yes, I mean, you're, you're going to have some weirdness. Um, you're going to have some weirdness if you have timestamps from all sorts of different time zones. So, so the easiest thing to do might be to, um, to change them all to UTC. Um, and, and actually there's a, um, there's a, uh, well, I mean, it depends. Like if it's okay, yeah, things are going to be weird if you don't move them all, if you don't have things all in, in the same, um, time zone. Uh, so, which is a problem in, in like, are you serious? I'm frozen. This is just ridiculous. I wonder if, um, okay, hopefully I unfreeze here. Uh, because everything is still rolling on my end and it shows that I'm talking. Um, so I'm, I'm going to proceed under the assumption that you guys can hear me now um, and and show the, uh, okay, Jerry says I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. Um, so the, uh, the um, what you can do, uh, the time zone question. Now I just can't even remember what it was I was, I was hoping to show. Um, Time zones, you have to have, oh, the one thing you can do is if you look at, one thing I noticed, and I haven't, honestly haven't really played around with this ever, but if you do want to do that and you um, go to, let's just create a new calc just to get into the calculation editor, is there's a macro to, 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 to UTC. Um, so, uh, if you have to do that, like you've got, um, timestamps that you want to convert all to the same time, this, and, and again, disclaimer, I've never used this before. I was doing something else and scrolling through this list and I was like, huh, that's cool. So if anybody in the chat has used it, maybe, maybe let us know what your, your experience with it is. But if you do need to like bring all sorts of different local timestamps into conformance, you could convert them all to UTC presumably using that function. So um, uh, earlier question about security, the DM have security group settings just like FM packages, right? Yes. So where those come in uh, is going to be, 
and, and it, it's not just like it. So what you can do is if I look at the go sales uh, schema here, and if I were to look at, let's say, uh, product line, if I look at the properties, you'll see set data security. So here is where you you would build data security that would say uh, product line en. Um, what is that? Do I have to? Uh, what? Where is that? I didn't know you could edit the expression from here. That's interesting. I should be able to get into yeah set data security, and then I thought I'd just like. That's right. Where where the heck is it? I'm totally blanking out on uh, where you set that. Anyway, Jerry, this is where you set it. You go to set data security, preview data included in data security definition. That's nice. Am I like doing this in the wrong place? This is where I've always gone to do it. There's other things you can control in here, like data cache settings um, that we can get into in a in a future. Um, a future uh, live stream. Yeah, security. Now there's security filters. Why wasn't that appearing before? Or was I just having a stroke? I don't know. Um, in any case, let's pick a different one. Sales retailer dim just to show you. So the way this kind of group works is you would choose a like a group or role, either from your Active Directory or from Cognos. So I'll just grab one from, from Cognos here, like Analytics Users. And then I say, OK. And then it says, OK, what type of filter do you want, right? So I can write an expression to do the filter if I want to do something more complicated. Or I could just say uh, retailer, uh, retailer code and say, you know, Analytics Users can see the following retailer codes. OK. And then I could grab a different group, user group or role and, and do the same thing. So you can kind of do it that way. Uh, now, what you can't do that you could do in, um, in Framework Manager is you don't have control over like object level security. So I can't control who can see sales fact and who can't see sales fact or, or who can see retailer name and who can't see retailer name, right? I, so I can control who at a data level who can see what, but I can't control at an object level who can see what. Um, so that that's kind of how you would do that. Um, if you wanted to make your own calendar, how would you do that? So um, I haven't done it. Um, who has done it? Again, Rory Cornelius. You should connect with him on, on LinkedIn uh, if you haven't, and just tell him I, I sent you. Um, so so. I haven't done it, but uh, what you can do is there is, and I'm just, I'm looking it up because they have a, uh, there are instructions on how to create custom calendars on the, on IBM's, um, on IBM's support page. I'm just not positive where it is. In any case, um, if you if you search on IBM's support page, you'll find it. Uh, maybe somebody in, in the live stream knows where it is. There's a calendar generator report available in samples. Uh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know about that. And there's Rory Cornelius. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at that and then and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day. Access to a schema or data server entirely. Yeah, yeah. So the schemas and data servers, Nick, uh, do have uh, where you can set security on on the entire thing. It's it's in the it's in here um, where you go into data server connections. You can set all of that stuff in here. Uh, so the samples. Now, of course, I messed with the samples in here. So the question is, I'm going to guess that that's actually in here, tools, calendar generator report. So I've never looked at this before. 
uh, oh, this will generate the CSV. Oh, this is cool. So, oh, I want 10 years worth of data and I want it to start today, finish. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. That makes things way easier. So what you would do then is you would export this to CSV um, and then you would, uh, yeah, and then you would re-import that into Cognos and probably put that in because there's actually like a data module that controls um, that controls the relative. So this calendar generator module, I'm sure you would use to to then generate the uh, the type of stuff that uh, that you would use for the the relative uh, date functionality. Well, that's cool. Thank you, Rory, for the tip. I, I didn't know about that. That makes things way easier. Okay. So at that point, I again I apologize for the technical difficulties. I don't I really I truly have no idea what the problem was or or what I did that that fixed it other than ending the stream and and restarting the stream. And even then, honestly, the the audio quality when I restarted it sounded pretty pretty poor on my preview version. But at least I wasn't echoing like crazy. So uh, for for the 11 of of you who are still uh, watching, thank you very much for attending. Uh, if you we will continue to do these going forward. So, um, you know, stay tuned. We will do more live streams. I enjoy doing it. It seems like it seems like you guys enjoy it too. Uh, if there, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to email me. It's uh, rdolly at, at pmsquare.com. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Visit our website, pmsquare.com. And, uh, and do stay tuned for, uh, for further live streams and upcoming events. Uh, I will plug one last time our, our upcoming uh, public training for data modules and for um, and for dashboards uh, on the data modules on the 20th of, of November and then again on the 12th of December. So uh, with that, thank you everyone for coming. I, I hope this was valuable. I apologize for the for the technical issues and I look forward to seeing you on another live stream. Take care.